Hi everyone, welcome back to Sever the Plot Thread, the podcast where experienced creators help you learn about making comics. I'm your host, Callum Quinn, and I've been posting comics online since 2019, including the sci-fi mystery epic Siblings of Steel, and the slice-of-life neurodiverse comedy Atypical Arts. Today I'll be taking you step-by-step through my process of making a comic outline. Now you may have heard of an outline before, but when I first started, it was very hard for me to find a format that worked, so I'm trying to make this episode something that would help me when I was starting out. Now, if you don't know, a comic outline is basically what you write before you write a script. And if you have a comic with any amount of a storyline or serialization, trust me, you're really going to thank yourself for this in the long run. Now, I'm primarily aiming this episode at people who are trying to make their first ever comic. And I'm going to assume you already have a story in mind, so let's take that story idea and turn it into something that you can put in your portfolio, that you can send to your friends, that you can put up online on your website, something you can really be proud of, and at the end, you'll have learned a lot about making comics. So the first thing I recommend is take your story idea, open up Word or Notes or whatever program you use for writing, and just write down the basic idea. Don't get caught up in plotting out every scene or every detail or every character arc. Just write down the basic idea and don't skimp on spoilers. Just write the whole thing out in what I like to call a word barf. Don't worry about it looking pretty. You'll have plenty of time to refine your idea in the future. Now, the importance of getting the ideas down on paper is that once they're there, you can refine them and you can go back and work through them. It just helps to get it out of your brain because then it doesn't seem so abstract. It's like a real thing that exists in the world now. At least that's what I've found. I also recommend if this is your first comic, starting with a short story, maybe six pages. If you just can't fit it in six, you know, try 12. Definitely don't do like a whole comic book issue yet. If you have like a big epic fantasy story you want to tell or a long serialized narrative, try taking a little piece of it and turning that into a short comic. Maybe you can do a character's backstory or how two characters in your comic met. I'm sure you can come up with some ideas. The great thing about this system that I'm teaching you is that it's modular and it can be used on little comics or multi-book epics. It basically adapts to fit whatever your needs are. So now that you have the basic idea down, is there anything you want to change? Is there anything you want to refine? This is a great time to just go through and iron out any plot details that might not make sense. After you've written it down and given yourself a little time, just away from it. Maybe give yourself a day, maybe an hour, take a walk, go for a run, do something physical. That really helps get my brain moving at least. And remember, there's going to be that inner critic. If you're anything like me, he's not very nice, he tells you your story sucks and that you'll never be a good writer, but remember, this is your first draft and this might even be your first comic. So It doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't even have to be something you'd ever want anyone to see. It just has to make, it just has to work for you, the listener, the writer who's telling your first story. You think Brandon Sanderson's first story was amazing? You think his first draft of Stormlight was a masterpiece, a a chef's kiss? No, it was probably something he never wanted anyone to see. And it's going to be the same with you. It's the same with me. It's the same with, I don't know, Christopher Nolan. Everybody has a first draft, so don't worry about it. Just write it down, give it a few paragraphs, don't go crazy. Okay, so you've got it written down, you've taken a walk, you've let it settle, now you're ready to dig in, copy and paste what you just wrote, and then start editing. Add a little more detail, add a few more plot elements, a few more character elements, if they're necessary. If you nailed it in one go, that's great. Basically what we're doing is giving your brain time to iterate on what you've created and expand on it, and that will help your story feel a lot more thought out and cohesive when it's complete. Remember to take breaks if you need to, if you're really stumped on something, maybe watch some YouTube videos about writing or listen to a podcast. 
Try not to get distracted just watching cat videos on the internet. It may help to introduce a Pomodoro technique. That's basically where you set a timer for 25 minutes and you focus on what you're doing for those 25 minutes. After you're done, you get a five minute break where you can go do whatever you want. Then you come back and you do that as many times as you need to to get this done. Now what you want to do, once you've got that basic description of your story done, is write a scene-by-scene -scene outline of the story. Now, if your story is only 6 or 12 pages, that's going to be pretty short, but these can get longer if, say, you're doing a full issue where you have a lot of different scenes. That's about 36 pages. 20 to 36 pages. Or if you're writing a whole graphic novel that's like 100 to 300 pages. That's a lot of different scenes, a lot of story to tell. So don't worry about getting it all done in one go, unless that's just how you work. Remember, a lot of this is about finding out what works best for you. And don't be afraid to go listen to other podcasts or watch other videos about people talking about their techniques. And feel free to mix and match. Find out what works best for you. As for the software you want to use, I like Campfire, although that is a paid product. The first 25,000 words of the manuscript function are free. Then you have to pay for the full module. If you're going to go that route, I recommend just trying the free trial first, seeing if it works for you, then paying for whatever modules you need. If you want a free option or that's out of your budget or you just don't like Campfire or World Anvil or whatever, just go to Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Those are free. They have all the tools you're going to need. I prefer Campfire because it's specifically for writing and I have a heavy world building tilt to my writing. I need a lot of systems in place to keep track of all that, but for you, maybe that won't work. But what you want to do is just write out that scene by scene description. Don't worry about getting like exact dialogue like Alan said, what do you mean the reactor is going to explode? Don't worry about getting every word of dialogue down. You're giving this is as if you're describing the story to your future self, to a friend. You're saying, and then they had a conversation where Alan was like, what do you mean the reactor's going to explode? And they have some witty dialogue. You can just keep this outline simple and to the point. Your main goal here is to just finish the outline. You can always go back and add more details in later drafts. You can change stuff. I highly recommend if you go back and make changes to this outline, make a duplicate and change that. You're, you're going to want to call it like draft one, draft two, draft three, because you're really going to thank yourself when you have access to those early drafts if you got rid of something that it turns out you wanted to keep or you want to go back to the old ones for inspiration. It is super important and I highly recommend you do that. If you're working with an artist, if you are the writer and you're working with an artist, that's probably not very likely. Honestly, a lot of webcomic people just do one person because then you only have to depend on yourself. It's a lot simpler and if you end up selling anything in the future, you don't have to worry about royalties or all this weird stuff. I recommend keeping it simple like that. But if you have someone you can trust and you rely on and you've worked out all the details, you may need to write this in mind uh, for an artist. So when you've finished the scene by scene description of the story, which if this is only a six to 12 page story, and keep in mind this can work for shorter or longer stories than I've described, then it's time to write the script for the comic itself. Now, remember, I said this is modular. My method basically relies on only doing the work you, the bare minimum of work you need to do to get everything planned out so when you come to the end of the story you haven't written yourself into a corner. Siblings of Steel is a multi-issue arc. That's my webcomic. I haven't written every single script with all the dialogue and all the concept art done, you know? It's gonna be a lot more than four issues. Uh, I'm on the fourth issue right now. I don't have the next script done. What I have is a master outline. I have many drafts of it, and I just describe, like, what happens in each one, and the farther out it gets, kind of the vaguer it gets, although I do have the ending planned out very well. The middle stuff is a little hazier because I'm still deciding, well, I want to conclude this story, but maybe I'll cut this part. But I have a list, and I highly recommend you do this too if it's a heavy 
outline-y sort of thing. This is more for the future, not for your first comic, but if you're foreshadowing stuff, if, say, a character unexpectedly learns the villain is their father, and you're, that's going to be hard for you to remember, maybe write that down. Like, just keep a little notepad, keep a document where you just write foreshadowing stuff, put an asterisk next to the text, and a footnote at the bottom that says, this is the character's father, remember to foreshadow this. That will really help you, trust me. I cannot tell you how many times I've changed my outline, or I've done stuff where I've gotten rid of entire story arcs, and been like, but I do need to keep this one thing, because I foreshadowed it in issue two or whatever. Super helpful. But you should probably save that for another episode, honestly. Anyway, I got way off target, but you're going to learn there's a lot of tangents on this podcast. Anyway, tips for working with an artist. So you're really going to want to describe panel layouts. Tips for working with an artist. You're not working with a professional like, you're not working for a professional comic book company. You're not working for Image or Marvel if this is your first story. I don't really know how they do their thing. Truth be told, I don't work with other artists, really, to make comics. I mean, I, I've i interviewed other artists. I hang out with them sometimes, but this may be the blind leading the blind. blind. But I have done some research on this. If you are working with another amateur artist, you're an amateur writer, they're an amateur artist, or vice versa, you're going to want to be very descriptive with your wording, maybe even describing the panel layouts, unless the artist likes to do that themselves. You have to basically figure out, does your artist like more freedom to just decide things on their own, say panel layout, or specific character expressions, or background design, or is it really important to you, the writer, that these things be specifically done out? Are you mainly doing the writing and they're doing the art? Or are you both kind of writing but they're handling the art? Or are you both handling art and writing? You have to figure out that dynamic. Then there's a lot more questions like what I just said, basically. But once you get that figured out, just communicate with each other. Get it kind of set in stone, but be willing to change if you need to. You just want to make it clear what is expected of each person, and then trust me, it will go a lot smoother. That also helps in relationships. And to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about, I'm going to read from you from the outline to Siblings of Steel. Uh, Not the outline, the issue. I'm going to read you from issue one script, Siblings of Steel. So let's go over here on my computer, and I'll pull it up for you. All right, now the way I format my issues, or my outlines, at least on a page by page is I use, and if you have Word, you're definitely gonna have this, or you know, any writing program is gonna have this. So you're gonna have those bullet point lists, you know the ones I'm talking about? If you don't know anything about using digital computer stuff, look up a YouTube video, top 10, I don't know, Microsoft Word tips, how to use notes, whatever. It's gonna be on the internet. But any of these programs is going to have a little thing where you can click a button and say, I want a bullet point list. And if you can't find that, just hit a number, hit one on your keyboard, put a period in front of it, and then hit space. So that's number one, period, immediately after that, and then hit space, and it will create a numbered list for you. If you hit return, oh, never mind. Okay, Then write something, say... Callum, then hit return and it will create a two, one and two, formatted the same way. And there you go, folks. You now know how to make a numbered list in whatever word program you're using. So basically what I do is I use those lists to, as a way to format my, as a way to tell myself what page each of these action things is taking place on, the actions of each page. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but Let's just read it here. Okay, page, so I have one period, and then PG period for page. And then when you hit return, it's going to create a two. Now hit tab, and you'll get an A. So the A, it's created a sub list within your list. Use that to write the action that happens on the first page. And I'll even include a link in the description so you all can check out this so you all can check out my script and see how it's done 
You don't need to copy this style exactly, but I find it very helpful. So basically we have one PG or just page one A front cover because there's only one thing on the front cover, the front cover. Page two in A interior cover. B synopsis slash pitch of first issue. C characters. I never actually included characters thing. Wasn't necessary. D credits. That's basically just who wrote this. It was me. I did all the work. All right. Page three, A, and now I'm describing what's going to happen on the page for myself later. We open on a rainy, stormy night on Anaro, where a ship is landing in a busy port up in the city. Fren, parentheses, future, colon, you see a lot of awful things in this job. Fren, future, you'd think after a while you'd get used to it, and maybe some do. Now we have a page break, page four. A, the ship lands. B, friend, future. I never did. C, friend, future. But this was before all that. D, friend, future. Me and my partner, Yoslin, were sent to investigate a murder on Anaro. All right, so you get a basic idea. Now, this is one of my early, earlier scripts, so it's I've changed it a little bit since then, but this is basically how it's done. Um, and you can feel free to change this as needed. I found it very helpful. The basic rule I follow is each lettered list point represents a panel. Now here on page four, I did kind of cheat. I just had a, a the ship lands, and the subsequent ones were just text boxes that were peppered through that panel, or like the whole page because it's a full page spread. But usually what I'll be doing is writing a description like, we open on a rainy, stormy night on Anaro where a ship is landing in the busy port, high in the city. But usually what I'm doing is, but what you can do is basically describe what happens in that panel, and then in that same sentence, but with a period or whatever, make it clear who's talking. So say like friend, and then future, because she's narrating this from the future, and then colon, whatever she says. Just do something to make it clear to you who's talking, and what panel this is taking on. Now, what I used to do is write down exactly the size of every panel and the shape of every panel. I don't do that anymore. I have an idea in my mind, and I just do that when I get to drawing the page. So here, page four, the ship lands, and then friend future, blah, 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 friend future, blah, 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 friend future, blah, blah, blah. I just decided, I was like, this is a full page spread when I drew it. And I knew that each of the things friend says uh, that were different points on the list were different text boxes that would be peppered sequentially through that page. And that worked for me. Sometimes I'm more specific, like this will be a full page spread. Sometimes I just say, these will be like three rows or whatever. But I always make a note to myself if it's important to the story. But I found that writing every single panel size was overwhelming and restrictive to my process. But I will link... I will leave a link to this document in the show notes, so you can feel free to go look at that and uh, basically just use that for yourself um, if you want to. I find this method very helpful. I guess I should also mention, yeah, I guess if there was one last thing I wanted to say in this episode, it's just try not to do more work than is necessary. Unless you find that fun, I personally want to have finished a story more than I enjoy the process of writing it. Which is not to say that I don't enjoy writing it. I love to do it. It's my passion. It's what brings me joy. But I could make Siblings of Steel 50 issues if I wanted and tell every single little side story and every single little side character would have an arc and all of this stuff, but I don't want it to take me 10 to 15 years to make this comic. I want to tell the core story with maybe a little extra stuff and then put that story to rest and move on to the next thing because I want to have a bunch of finished work in 10 years that I can show off. I want to say, if you don't like this, well, I got this other story and I got this book and I got this comic and I got this podcast and that's basically my dream. But that doesn't mean you can't do whatever you want, but I recommend this method has been designed basically to allow me to do as little work as possible with as best an outcome as possible with the most quality product I can make. 
So when you're making the main outline, just do the main outline. If this is going to be a longer story, so we're kind of moving out of just one little story now and saying, if you're going to do a big story, you make the main outline after you've done the little blurb describing the basic premise and arc and stuff. Sometimes it helps me to write the ending first. Sometimes I start from the beginning and write all the way to the end. Either way, you just want to eventually have a full outline, then you can make subsequent drafts and improve it. After that comes, if it's a book or a series of comics, like issues, you do an arc outline. So you have the main outline, which describes, I mean, kind of, it doesn't have to be scene by scene. If it's like a 20 volume series, or even if it's just a 12 issue series, don't do scene by scene. That could take too long unless you're really dedicated. Well, no, not even that. It doesn't mean you're more dedicated if you do that. This is a time-saving thing. So once you have the main outline, that should just be like, in this arc, the characters learn the true meaning of friendship, and they find the golden helmet that the bad guy will use in the finale to destroy the world, but they save it. Just basic, basic stuff like that. And don't be nervous if it sounds dumb when you write it, because... That, I mean, that's how I feel sometimes. I write out a thing and I'm like, this is stupid. But again, you're writing the most basic version of this of this outline, of this story. You can summarize a lot of things in a way that makes them sound stupid. Like, a guy inherits his dad's tool and goes and fights with his dad in space. That's Star Wars. It sounds really dumb that way, doesn't it? I guess I'm being a little intense. I should calm down, but I don't know. I just get passionate about this kind of thing, and I want you to succeed. I want to make something that'll help people. But anyway, once you've done that basic main outline, then you can do an arc outline, which is a little more detailed. That should be scene by scene. Uh, I say should be, but of course, feel free to adapt this however you want to your own needs. The arc outline is like if you got the first four issues or the first book, you want to do that out scene by scene, and that's going to require a bunch of drafts of its own. Once you have the arc done, you can do an issue script, or this might be a chapter strip, the script, if it's, you know, a book or a graphic novel. And that will be the, that will be more than a scene by scene, that'll be a panel by panel, page by page description with full dialogue and descriptions of each panel and the art that's in it and all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, once you get past that point, this is when I start doing concept art, but I'm going to save that for a future episode. This will be part uh, part one in a series I'm doing on my creative process for how I create comics like Siblings of Steel, which, by the way, is available for you to read if you want to see, uh, basically, if you want to see me put my money where my mouth is, you can go see that. Feel free to let me know. I mean, there's a comment section on my website, it's a comment section on Webtoon, the links are going to be in the description. If you think I did a great job, let me know. If you think I did a crappy job, let me know how I can improve. I love getting feedback. Look forward to more interviews in the future. Look forward to an episode on concept art. Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, make sure to subscribe. You can find Sever the Plot Thread on all your major podcasting sites as well as YouTube. Thank you for listening, and have a great rest of your day. Take it easy, Internet. Internet.